In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the feedback for each loop, how it works, and how to use and apply feedback for each loops in practical use cases, like procedural modeling a bookshelf and using feedback for each loops to modify the topology of geometry. This video is the first part in a mini series of basic concepts where I start from a very basic example and build up to advanced workflows with the feedback for each loop. This will make the information easier to digest and you won't get lost. This video built on top of a previous video I made on beginners for free each loops. For those of you that have never used for each loops in Houdini may want to check that video out. It covers all the very basics of for each loops and in this video, we'll mainly focus on the feedback part of the for each loops in Houdini. Let's start off with a grid. Now I'm gonna get rid of all the topology and have a really simple four point grid. So this grid only has four points. Now we're gonna send this grid into a for each loop. We're gonna start off with a very simple for each number loop. So it's simply gonna repeat X number of times into this for each loop. Now what we have here, we're using the merge each iteration. So for the gather method, merge each iteration, it's simply getting a new grid 10 times because we have number of iterations set to 10. So we're get grab for each cycle or for each iteration of the for, for loop, we're grabbing a new grid. It's like grabbing a new piece of paper 10 times. We're going to end up with 10 pieces of paper. And to show you that, I want to look at the number of points we end up with. Grid only had four points to begin with. We are now hitting 40 points. That's because we have 10 grids. To show you that, let me, it doesn't look like it in the viewport. Just, that's because it's all stacked on top of each other and it looks like it's one piece. But once we start moving this around, okay, let's move this out of the way. We're going to see another grid underneath it. Let's move this guy out of the way. We're going to see another grid underneath it and so on and so on and so on. All 10 grids are going to be stacked uh, on top of each other. So that's because we're not doing anything inside this for each loop. It's, it's, empty. It's simply just grabbing the grid and merging it with the next iteration. So nothing's being happened. And that results in everything, all 10 grids being stacked up on each other. Now, let's switch this up. And we're going to do, instead of merge each iteration, we're going to do feedback each iteration, which is the main focus of today's video. And what this simply does is takes this grid, feeds it into this for each loop, and then it feeds back or reuses the same grid again. So we're not grabbing a new grid anymore. We're going to use reuse the same grid. Now there is another thing we need to um, update in here is that after you switch this for each loop, the gather method, after you switch it over to feedback each iteration, you also need to change the input over here to actually grab the feedback. Now let's click this guy, select your beginning begin for each loop node. That's the one that is receiving the inputs and come over here and it says method fetch input. But what we want is fetch feedback because now we're dealing with the feedback uh, for each loop. Now let's come back over here and let's look at the points. We end up with four points for after all 10 iterations of the feedback for each loop. That means we end up with the exact same grid. We're reusing the geometry. We end up with uh, what we began with. So if I move this grid over here, there's nothing underneath it. And double check this grid. It is indeed four points. So we did start off with four points. This is basic concept number one. Now let's move on to the next thing I want to show you, which I'm going to call basic concept number two. So we're going to start building up on the concept before we get into the bookshelf, which is the final application of the feedback for each loop. And let's actually add some functionality in this feedback for each loop. Let's actually do something because right now it's not doing much. Now let's add a, something simple to start off with and add a subdivide. So that's a lot of subdivisions. Now let me lower the number of iterations because we have way too many iterations. Let's do four iterations to start off with. So we can see that this grid now has a lot more topology. At the beginning, I started off with a plain grid with there's like no topology in the middle. At the end of the feedback for each loop, after reusing the same grid and subdividing the same grid four times, we get all this. You wouldn't really use the for each 
feedback for each loop like this um, in the real life application because we could use this grid and we can simply just subdivide it four times. So there is no practical use case for this example. I just want to show you to illustrate what the for each loop feedback for each loop is actually doing. If I were to do this four times, we're going to end up with the exact same grid as what we had in this feedback for each loop. So this example was only to illustrate the reuse, the reusing of the same geometry, input geometry in this case, which is our plain grid here. Reusing this geometry, going through the functionality inside the for feedback for each loop, inside this orange block, and doing that same thing over, but reusing that same geometry and over and over and over. Now, if this wasn't a feedback for each loop, we wouldn't end up with so many subdivides because in here we're only subdividing it once. If this feedback for each loop wasn't a feedback, if we switch it over to a merge each generation, we're going to get a different result. It's still, we also have to update this, uh, this node over here as well. So instead of getting it fetch feedback, we should get fetch input. And we can see that it's only being subdivided once. But there's actually ten, uh, four grids. So there's actually four grids because it's uh, iterating and merging it four times. So again, there's grids underneath it. But what I wanted to show you is that it's only being subdivided once as opposed to what was happening before when, when this was a feedback for each loop, it was being subdivided multiple times because we were subdividing the already subdivided plain grid. And let's switch this all back. I'm going to switch this back to feedback for each loop. And I'm going to switch this back to fetch feedback. So this is subdividing again and again and again. So this is basic concept number two. Now let's move on to basic concept number three and get rid of that subdivide. And I'm going to do something more interesting than subdividing the grid. Let's take this and let's switch it up for a poly extrude. So we actually get some new geometry. And let's just extrude it to 0.5. So we're extruding this four times. Let's go through this one step at a time. So let's take this and I'm going to step through each iteration. So let's start with the first iteration. We're simply just taking the grid and extruding it up. This is just poly extrude once. Okay. What happens if we extrude this the second time? It, it looks like that the box has grown. It doesn't look like it's doing much, but if you look underneath, it's extruding it in multiple places. Like here, it's taking all the sides and pushing it outwards. So this is not very interesting. It, it just looks like the box is growing just because all the sides are being extruded again and again and again. In order to limit the extrusion, we're going to target a face. So this poly extrude over here, we can select a specific face or specific primitive to extrude. And I'm just going to keep picking the top face. So in this poly extrude, we also have the ability to name the faces that are being extruded out. And this comes incredibly handy because I want to keep extruding the face, the top face. And over here, when I enabled this, the top face that gets extruded over here will be labeled extrude front. So I'm going to copy this name. I'm going to create a group just so we can visualize this. So this is not for any practical case. I'm going to color this black. So this is not going to affect our geometry at all. It's just the visual purposes. So I'm going to visualize this and we need to update this for each loop. So the iterations here is going through it twice, but I want to step through the iterations and actually take a peek at what's going on in each cycle. So let's ch turn it back to one. And then another thing to note down is that you need to click this end node over here in order to have this viewport to update. So it doesn't, Houdini doesn't start compiling the for each loop unless you click on the end, the for each end node. Click this and I'll update. So now if we click on the group, we can see that it's labeling, it's highlighting only the top piece, the top face. And we want to keep extruding the top face instead of extruding all the sides as well. So it, we can only, we get something that keeps on growing upwards. Let's select the poly extrude. And now we can actually target a specific group. 
to only extrude the extrude front. So take, copy this, and we're going to paste it up here. Now, we're instantly, we're going to get hit with a warning. That's because the very first iteration, it doesn't have, that group doesn't exist. This extrude front doesn't exist for the very first time it goes through this for each loop. So you have to be very conscious of the state that you're in when you're using feedback for each loop. And let's prepare this all up. So let's actually label our grid, our input, our input grid up here. And let's give it an initial group name and label it extrude from and then run through this again. Okay, no warnings. The war it got rid of the warnings. Well, we have warning here. Once it compiles, it's fine. Okay, that's the first. That's only one iteration. Now let's actually turn this up. Okay, let's turn up the number of iterations. One, two, three. Okay, it looks like it's working because we're um, successfully stacking, extruding the top part of the grid. And it, we're always extruding the top one. And that results in a mini tower that's being grown out of our initial grid. Now, this isn't very interesting. But first of all, let me increase the poly uh, distance that it's extruding up. So let's increase this to one. So we get something a little higher. Actually, let's make it two. So we get something a little higher. And what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start twisting this. We can start in setting it and we can start twisting it. Okay, that's too much. Okay, there we go. And that's a bit more interesting. So this is an example of what it is. It's trying to do like stacking on top of each other. We're actually building stuff on top of this. So what I want you to take away from the third concept is the initial state. Um, the initial state over here, the initial input grid and the initial group that we had to assign to the input grid, the extrude front, which kick starts the entire feedback for each loop. Now in here, the poly extrude, we tell Houdini that we only extrude the group named extrude front. And that's the only face or primitive that we start extruding. But what happens? Where does this extrude front come from? Or how, how, where does it actually start or begin with? It comes from the poly extrude. It's a sign from the poly extrude itself down here. Every single time it goes through the poly extrude and extrudes something, it'll assign the first, the front, the very front face and faces front faces and assign it to the group extrude front. But this is only assigned after it enters the poly extrude. What do we do with the very first iteration or the very first cycle of the feedback for each loop? We need something to kickstart it. And that's why we need the initial state or we need to treat the initial state uh, a little bit different compared to everything else, compared to the the other iterations of the feedback for each loop. The initial state need a little bit more care and you need something to kickstart it. For example, if I ignore this group, so we don't kickstart it, nothing will happen. This won't, our, our viewport, um, our geometry will not be modified. It's the exact same input grid that we started off over here. And in fact, let's go over here and let's take a look. So indeed we have the four points that we started off with. So this is at the end. So we nothing's the geometry hasn't changed unless we kickstart it using this um our at the initial at the be initial geometry. So if I enable this oops to refresh automatically, and then I'm gonna re-enable our kickstart geometry, our kickstart group, it'll finally do something. Because this poly extrude will only do something if it's inside the extrude front. So the initial state to kickstart the entire feedback for each loop, for the very first iteration, you have to be careful how to kickstart the whole thing. So that's what I want you to uh, take away from basic concept number three, the initial state. In the next video, I'll showcase real applications of the feedback for each loop and how it can be used to modify topology in a geometry in basic concept number four, and how to procedurally model a bookshelf with feedback for each loops in basic concept number five. Please check those out. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.